My name's Linda and 2021 saw me take my passion for my garden and turn that into a small business where I sell fresh seasonal cut flowers. And today I wanted to show you my favourite and what has been the most requested flower to date and that is the sweet pea. As you can see I've got a rather uh, deep wall of sweet pea at the moment. This is mid-July. The heat has taken its toll and I have stopped cutting these now uh, to sell. But that means that I am able to enjoy their scent um, and enjoy their looks for myself while I'm out in the garden. They're very pleasing on the eye and they're very abundant. And today I want to show you how you can create your own wall of sweet peas so that you'll be able to pick some of these and take them inside for beautiful little jam jar posies beside your bed, maybe in the dining hall. And the one thing with sweet peas is the more you pick, the more they bloom. So while this looks amazing out here, um, as they're towards the end of their life, but uh, in the start, when they start to bloom, the more you pick, the more flowers will come. So you'll have endless um, posies and jars of flowers in your bedroom um, for quite a few months. Back in the polytunnel and we're going to look at sewing sweet peas. I am so glad that I uh, took the short video introducing sweet peas the other day outside in that beautiful sunny dry blue sky weather because as the last two days we have had thunder and lightning, we have had torrential downpours and um, they're looking a little bit sad now. Sweet peas are very simple to start. We need to soak them overnight first, so just in a jar um, of water like this. And uh, this next snap is going to show you my sweet peas all lined up back in October when I autumn sowed. We soak sweet peas overnight to help break down their seed coat because they have a really firm seed coat and by soaking them that means that they will sprout faster. I soak mine in tempered water so not cold but not um, boiling just just slightly warm water and like I say that just it means your germination rate will be faster. I sow in autumn and spring if you sow in the autumn time, you do need to have somewhere to overwinter them. So somewhere like a polytunnel, a glass house, or one of those little um, zippy plastic greenhouses. However, I am going to give you a word of warning, as you can see in this next picture. You do need to have those securely tied down and weighed down. So after the little accident, I used bungee cords to secure my frame to a downpipe and I weighed the bottom of my zippy with some um, extra paving slabs that we had. So a little word of warning, you do need to be very careful because um, you don't want to unintentionally lose all your hard work. So I sow in autumn time and that sweet peas do need a period of cold weather and that is to initiate branching, which you can see in this next photo.
and what branching means is um, you will get more flowers you will have more branches with more stems which will produce more flowers and again autumn sown sweet peas they can be so much taller than spring sown ones and we plant out autumn sown sweet peas around with the best thing is to judge by the weather even though sweet peas are a hardy annual so they will take minus temperatures they they do not like a prolonged wet damp and cold spell just after they've been planted out so just judge by the weather if you're going to plant some of the autumn sown ones indoors like i did this year i planted them in february time And then I planted my spring sowing. So I sowed in February time and I was able to plant those outside April, end of April. Just judge it by the weather um, when it's going to be fair, fair and mild. And um, within a few months, you will have lots and lots of blooms. The pots that you can use for sweet peas need to be quite deep because sweet peas have a long root run. So here I have got a nine centimeter square. So it's just nine by nine and I think it's maybe 10 deep. And this one is 10 round and I think nine deep. But either or is perfect for your sweet peas. And what I do is then fill it up to about two thirds with my compost. I take my pre-soaked seeds and add one in to three corners. So one in each corner. And then I take some more compost and fill it up. So maybe you're just covering by about a centimetre. And then that way you are still leaving a centimetre here from the top of the soil to the pot to allow for watering. You then make sure you write a label. So what I'm planting today is a midnight blue. And also pop on the back the date. Now you won't be planting these in July. This is just a, for an example for today. It will be October or February. And then I like to put on the number of seeds that I have sown. So today I sowed three seeds. And a little trick that I learned this year when sowing sweet peas is to put your label in the corner that doesn't have a sweet pea. So what that tells me is, the label tells me the name, tells me the date that I sold, and it tells me there's three seeds in this pot. And those three seeds are one, two, and three. So then I know if something hasn't germinated. But it also means that say there was only your packet had an even number and you only had two seeds in one pot or one seed in one pot and the rest all had three, then you know which pot is which. So label it, date it and write the number of seeds that are in the pot 
and put your label in the corner with no seed. Next up, you would water your sweet peas. Sweet peas are quite a large seed and because you have them covered, you will be able to water them from above. But most of my seed trays, I like to water from below. So in this next picture, I show you all my nine centimeter pots lined up, labeled up and watering from below. I have used a variety of different supports to um, allow my sweet peas to grow up. I have used trellises and I've had those against walls. I have made teepee structures just with bamboo canes. In fact, that is what I was standing at um, where I took the introduction to the sweet peas. That was a frame made from bamboo canes with then some jute netting hung over it. So I hope you were able to see the structure that I had there. It was almost like a tent. So I had used bamboo canes, an angle like this here, in the ground, an angle like this, and then one running along the top to secure them all together. And then over that, I had laid some jute netting and that's what the sweet peas were tied into. Sweet peas were planted 22 centimetres apart. Other ways um, to plant sweet peas out and to be able to support them would be with an obelisk. Now, I don't have any photos of growing them that way myself, but I am just going to insert one here so you'll be able to see. So I hope you enjoyed that short video on how to sow and plant out sweet peas. I am going to take this little bunch that I have rescued and enjoy them on my kitchen table. And I just want to leave you with a few reminders of um, pre-soak your sweet peas. When you're sowing them, use a 9 or 10 centimetre pot so they have a, a deep root run to plant. They are hardy, but just uh, keep an eye on that weather and try and plant them outside during uh, a milder spell. So you're looking to plant outside around March or April. And make sure you are tying them in every couple of days. You don't want to uh, let them run wild. because then they'll be very hard to tame. You are giving them a feed once a week with a seaweed feed or even when they bloom a tomato feed and uh, make sure you are out almost, almost every day you could be picking a beautiful little bunch of scented sweet peas for your bedroom or for the dining room. So thank you for listening.